How do you improve on the bass and actually make that progress stick? What's going on? It's Jason Ethan. I've been fascinated by the topic of improvement on the double bass for years. So frequently, I've felt like I'm just spinning my wheels, not making any gains, and it's so frustrating because I know that I'm not achieving what I can as a player. Recently, though, I've discovered some new tactics, and they are helping me to achieve my goals and make them stick in record time. So in this video, we're going to go through them and show how you can apply them to your practicing, plus an extra tip that has totally changed the way that I've thought about progress on the bass. Luis Celis recently won a double bass spot in the Cincinnati Symphony, and the way he approached improvement is a huge game changer for me in terms of organizing practicing. So I try to be as organized as I can. So I made a list and from one to 10, I ranked all my excerpts, uh, which one is the best. Like if I had to play it right now, what would it be? Would it be a one? Would it be bad? Or would it be like, oh yeah, that was solid. You know, you have to be honest with yourself, like which is your best extra. Luis also did something that we all know we should do more often. I recorded myself and I would listen and I would make comments. What do I need to work on? Okay. Then he was tactical about this material, organizing it into specific categories. I made a list and I divided it in three groups. Group number one were the ones that I needed to practice the most. We, you know, group number two, a little bit of both. And Group number three, you know, everything else. This is something I know I should do, but I rarely follow through, and Luis has inspired me to get better about this. Luis went way beyond this in terms of organization, though. For the month, I made sure that I knew when I was going to practice and exactly what I was going to practice. But on five, most of 40, and, and number nine, uh, let's say they were part of the group. I would say, okay, I'm going to practice on Monday uh, from two to four. But then I'll be like, I'm going to practice number nine for 30 minutes and I'm just going to focus on the first measure, you know, and I'm going to focus on the first note just to get a big fat sound, big fat vibrato. And maybe my, my right hand needed help. So I would just isolate or maybe the intonation needed help. So I would just isolate the left hand. That's so tactical. I think we're all guilty of pulling the same piece out day after day and just hacking away at it. And I love how Luis took away the guesswork by scheduling all of this out. I would just plan in big scale, you know, week, month. When I went to the practice room, I am not gonna waste my time. I'm not gonna, you know, wander around. I just go there knowing exactly what I'm gonna do. And usually, uh, it takes less time. A lot of the time, we're just avoiding the hard work. So facing the facts is key. Be honest with yourself. Look at you know. Look at yourself in the mirror. Is it out of tune? Why is it out of tune? Is it my arm? Is it my fingers? Is it my bow that's making the the notes out of tune? Um, this needs to be more legato. How can I do that? You know, is it the angle of the bow? Is it the bow speed? And usually, you can get pretty good answers for yourself. It's so easy to hit plateaus and not feel like you're getting better. And here's how Luis worked through that. Every time I felt stuck and I had to go into the practice room just because I needed to practice, I asked two questions. Do I know what I'm going to do? And am I like in a good mindset to do it? Sometimes when I didn't feel I could practice that day and I was honest with myself, this happened a few times. I've had too much of this. I haven't had a break in like weeks. And if I practice right now, it's going to be counterproductive. You know, it's it's not going to do me any well. So I'm just going to not play the bass because if I play, I might get hurt. I might get even more burned out. So it's better that I just rest. Sometimes you can solve these problems on your own, but sometimes the best course of action is to seek help. It's like pouring gasoline on the fire. And here's how that worked for Luis. I, I used to, you know, just log myself in the practice room and, and just ask, why is this not working? I tried everything that I could. And then I just played for someone and it's like, yeah, just use Lesbo. And then it will work immediately. You know, sometimes we get trapped into this like, oh, it's not working and it's so hard, but it's really not. Music is not meant to be hard. You know, it's just meant to be easy and enjoyable. There's so much more than just the bass part, of course. And Luis spent a lot of time away from the bass learning his craft. I just wanted my playing to be so clear that there was no question that I knew the music. I sat down with the score. I saw where, you know, I would listen to a symphony. If it was Brahms, I listen to the entire thing. Read about the composer, read about the piece, all these things, you know, just be as, as prepared as you can. So I would listen to the recording and then I would listen to myself. I would make notes, you know, of how I thought I sounded. Luis also used one of the most useful tactics for getting better and it's one that a lot of people avoid. Another thing that helped is like, for example, uh, I play for a, you know, send recording to a bunch of people and, um, say I made comments of myself from that recording 
And then that other person also gave me comments. So I will compare them. You know, what are they hearing? What am I hearing differently? Yes, it's so important to get feedback from others, but it's also important to have your artistic confidence in what you're trying to say. To have that confidence in what you want your sound to be. Because you also can't listen to everyone else. And not everything works for everyone. A lot of my teachers were um, French bow, you know, players. I'm German bow. So a lot of things don't really translate. Uh, also playing for violinists, a lot of things don't translate. You have to be able to translate things that people say into your own body and bass and music taste. Okay, you got your artistic conviction down, but what about when things freeze up in the moment and everything feels like it's falling apart? One of the great bass players that I studied with for a little bit was uh, Todd Seeger uh, from the Boston Symphony. He gave me this advice. He said, if you go in or you go to any any room or any place and uh, have a strong artistic statement, then just go for that and forget about the technicality, you know, because it's much more interesting to hear someone making a mistake, but with a strong conviction of the phrase or, or what they're doing that then listening to someone that's just thinking about getting all the right notes and, and, you know, it's not even, um, human at that point. Okay, here's that extra tip from Luis that really reframed progress for me. When you're at the gym, right, and you're working out, you're lifting weights, your muscles doesn't grow, don't grow when you're exercising, like while you're exercising. They actually grow when you're resting. It doesn't sound like it's it's right, but your muscles grow when there are when they're resting, when you're sleeping. It doesn't happen at the gym when you're lifting. So sometimes I would just practice an extra an extra and I'd be like, yeah, that, that felt good. And then the next day, my fingers would remember and it would it'd be, it'd be an even stronger, like uh, a stronger feeling, you know, like now I have it, you know. If I want something to be good, I start practicing now. And then later is, you know, my muscles start to understand what, what's happening. I think about that advice every time I go to the gym and every time I pull out my base, it's so helpful. And taking that long-term view is so crucial for getting better. Thanks for checking out the video. Thank you, Luis. Congratulations. And if you want to learn more about getting better, check out what we've got linked up. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.